Hey everyone, uh, I'm Kendra Abbott. I am an ecologist and researcher uh, in the biology department at the University of Alabama. And I'm John Abbott. I am an entomologist and the chief curator and director of museum research and collections for the University of Alabama. And today we thought we'd talk to you about fireflies, uh, the natural history, diversity, and things you might be confusing as a firefly that actually aren't fireflies. So fireflies are something that I know I grew up, uh, especially around the 4th of July, catching them. But I grew up in the north, so they didn't come out, start coming out until probably around the 4th of July. And we'd catch them and put them in jars um, and, you know, play with them when we were little. So, um, but there's a lot more to them than just glowing around the 4th of July, right? Yeah, I think we all have, uh, or at least many of us have similar experiences. I, I uh remember visiting my grandmother in Georgia and her backyard just which is much like ours is now actually forested uh, was just full of fireflies and would also catch them and put them in put them Jars. in a jar and, <laughs> you know the obligatory um, uh, natural lantern uh, I guess yeah. that kids so often in competition how many can I get can I get more than you you know with my cousins and stuff so but um, there are many species. So actually, they're, they're, not only are they beautiful, but um, they're beneficial because they have, as, a, as larvae, uh, where do they live? Uh, the larvae of most live in uh, the soil and uh, forest understory, oftentimes in, in pretty moist situations uh, associated with um, uh, streams, not in the streams, but kind of in riparian zones oftentimes. Uh, and certainly, uh, you know, again, mostly in moist situations. So they tend to be more common um, in the U.S. Uh, in the east, where there's just more water. Yeah, and the larva actually will feed on things like snails and slugs and things like that that might actually be attacking the plants in your garden if you have one. So the larva can be quite beneficial. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And um, don't look anything like... Uh, the adults in some cases and look uh, almost identical in others, as we'll talk about. That's right. Um, and then, of course, the pupa, when they become, um, they will glow in the larva stage as well, right? All firefly larvae and pupae, uh, even those with adults that don't bioluminesce, the larvae and the pupae bioluminesce. Yeah, so that's really cool that, the, that you can see the, like, walk through the woods, and if you see something glowing in the leaf litter, it could very well be the larva or pupa of a firefly, which is really cool. Um, so, all of, all fireflies uh, belong in the family Lampyridae. It's a really easy family to remember uh, for obvious reasons, right? Many of them have a, a lantern or a lamp, and so the family is Lampyridae. They are, in fact, beetles, uh, so the both common names that are really ubiquitous uh, in the U.S., fireflies and lightning bugs, are a bit of a misnomer. They're neither flies nor bugs. They're beetles. Um, but those two names are fairly, uh, you know, they're kind of regional in terms of which one is used uh, more commonly. So the reason that fireflies bioluminesce is to attract mates. They have a species-specific flash pattern, color and 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 color specific, and uh, oftentimes and um, the pattern itself is species specific. And that's so that they can recognize uh, individuals of their species. And so males will fly around and um, will you know have the species specific pattern. That will get females flashing. Uh, they will then uh, attract the male uh, who will then find her and then mate with her. Yes. We have a lot of species here in Alabama. Um, and one of them uh, in particular is the blue ghost firefly, which when I first heard of the blue ghost firefly, I thought there's no way this thing bioluminesces blue. And um, But when I saw it, it actually did. To my eye, it looked like it was blue, which I was uh, shocked about. Um, but yeah, that's called the Purkinje effect. And, and in fact, it actually isn't blue. It's green. And you'll see that 
uh, in our photos of them um, to the eye that looks quite different than what our photos replicate. And the reason is this thing called the Purkinje effect, which basically in low light situations, the luminance sensitivity of your eye goes towards blue. Uh, and so it just makes it look like um, the blue ghost firefly is shining blue yeah. when actually it's, it's a green light. Yeah, so um, if you're walking through the woods, um, there you can also see the larva form female of this one, which um, actually will... it do, do, The female actually looked green in the woods. Yeah, she looks more uh, green, uh, I agree. In the leaf and, litter. Um, she is constantly lit up, uh, basically four little dots when yeah. you get close, four little lanterns. Uh, constantly uh, fluorescing and, or bioluminescing. And she is a good example of, of where she looks very much like the larva. It's called yeah. a larva form female as a result. doesn't look anything like the adult male. But she's constantly on. Uh, and then he is um, flying, making trails, as you can see in our photos. And then he will uh, recognize her, fly down and uh, locate her and, uh, and mate. How many species are there of firefly? There are about 2,000 species uh, worldwide and um, a little shy than, uh, of 10%, about 170 or so in North America. Again, most of those are found uh, east of the Rockies. And how many bioluminesce of those 170 The most, the, the majority, majority. Uh, the males, uh, the majority of those bioluminesce, uh, but... Um, and fly, but uh, I don't know the exact number. And I would say when we first, at night, as the sun starts going down, the first things I usually see species-wise are those um, Big Dipper. They kind of make a J. Um, and that's when the light, it's still pretty light. It's just as the sun's going down, so you can see very well. And I imagine that's mostly what I was catching when I was young, because I was little and probably went to bed before most of these came out. Yeah, the Big Dippers are one of the um, uh, more widespread uh, eastern species of fireflies that um, people may be familiar with because they do come out um, uh, relatively early compared to a lot of species and are oftentimes in pretty good numbers and, and quite noticeable. Another sort of famous species is the synchronous firefly, which you sort of see in the Smoky Mountains. Um, but we also have them here in Alabama. Yeah, so there are actually a number of species that uh, basically are synchronous. Uh, there's some in Asia, and there's more than one here in the U.S. But the, the kind of the famous one um, is, is found in the Smokies and in northern Alabama. And um, they're pretty spectacular um, yeah. you know, when you get high densities of these things. And it's interesting, they're, they're actually synchronizing the gaps between their flashes, not the flashes themselves. Uh, so they're basically trying to uh, make sure that nobody's flashing during these gaps, if you will, so that they can see females, is the thought, uh, a little bit easier. Uh, and um, so it's, it's the, the yeah. darkness that they're actually synchronizing. It, it's sort of like, it hadn't... Like, I thought, sort of, you just have all on, all off. All on, all off. And that's not how it is at all. It's all, it's like paparazzi, bam, 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 off. Paparazzi, bam, 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 off. That's how it, that's really how it is. And it happens um, kind of in micro areas. So, you know, within a particular area, uh, you'll see them doing that. You look down a little bit further and you might see them, you know, That's in right. a slightly different timing. <laughs> uh, and of course they don't all start off immediately that way. It takes a little bit of time for them to synchronize yeah. as they get going. Yeah. That's a Photinus species. There are two really large genera that are kind of, you know, among the most common species in, in North America, and that's Photinus, where the synchronous one is, is an example of that. They don't all synchronize, though. And then Photurus, you know, which is oftentimes a little bit larger species, and uh, they are really um, spectacular um, as well in many cases. Uh, we saw some that sometimes they're referred to as Christmas um, light uh, fireflies because... That the ones that were just sort of constant paparazzi? Constantly, just like yeah. For, no, no real gap. Yeah. Um, but like flickering or blinking yeah. Christmas lights. When you see that in high numbers, it is insanely impressive. 
you just wonder like how is there so much how are they expending so much energy right and uh the trick with that is is that they're not well that's right that's, that's, a, that's a great segue uh, yeah so what makes a firefly a firefly is that many of them not all of them because there are some diurnal ones that don't do this but many of them have the ability to bioluminesce and uh, they do this in a very very efficient uh, manner uh, where they're basically not wasting uh, any energy in the form of heat. So if we think about the evolution of light bulbs, uh, it's a, we've been striving for a more and more efficient uh, type of light, starting off with incandescent bulbs uh, initially. A lot of young kids probably don't even know what that is anymore, but they were really hot uh, to the touch because they were a very inefficient uh, form of light. So we have gone from those inefficient tungsten bulbs to compact fluorescent, which give off uh, less heat. They're, they're more energy efficient. And now we've gone to getting away from even those to a more efficient form of light, LEDs, which give off even less heat and are more energy efficient. And the way that fireflies do this and other bioluminescing animals is with something called luciferin, uh, which is a substrate that in the presence of uh, oxygen, ATP, this energy molecule, and luciferase, uh, a, an enzyme, produces this very, very energy efficient light. Uh, and it's the same thing if any of you have used glow sticks. Um, they're often common around Halloween and things like that. But, you know, these things produce a light that is very energy efficient. You don't have to worry about touching it in terms of, of burning yourself. Uh, that is based on uh, nature uh, and uh, this uh, is based on this luciferin uh, substrate that you find in fireflies. What makes this even more impressive mm. is that fireflies do this as adults without eating. They don't feed as adults generally, right? That's right. Um, that's the general notion, although you can read a number, you can and, and see sometimes anecdotally. Um, the like nectar fireflies pollen. exactly some adults eating but generally you do read that they do not feed uh, they're certainly not um, with one exception predaceous like the larvae the females in the genus Froturus are predatory in fact they can be rather sneaky and that they will mimic the flashing signal of other species of fireflies those males then come into to them thinking they're going to mate and the females will feed on them. I've actually seen this. She's a, um, she's a man eater. <laughs> she's a man eater. If, if, the, if that song isn't, um, doesn't cost too much, we should put that in the video. Um, I think it probably does. <laughs> I, I, you, I've seen this before. Um, walking around and, and looking for fireflies, you can, you can observe this. Uh, and also even at, at um, black lights. Uh, sometimes fireflies will be attracted to black lights and I've seen Photurus females eating Photinus uh, uh, species at black lights before. Um, there are a number of things that mimic uh, fireflies, some of which bioluminesce, uh, others don't. There are actually click beetles especially in the tropics, but we have some in the U.S. as well, in the southern states that uh, bioluminesce. They have two little dots um, at the posterior margin of their pronotum. That look like eyes. They look like eyes, and they'll fly around bioluminescing or they'll land on a tree and bioluminesce. Adults that, that sometimes can bioluminesce, but the larvae of some species can as well. Um, we've seen them in Peru. Uh, there's some in, in Brazil. Uh, that bioluminesce and uh, they're really uh, spectacular uh, because they are oftentimes found in, in pretty dense aggregations and again what they're doing the idea is that, that they uh, are bioluminescing to attract potential prey uh, they're predatory as uh, a larvae and there are um, things like uh, fingotids or glowworms uh, that uh, look quite similar uh, in, in some cases to, um, uh, to fireflies just because they're kind of soft-bodied and, and bioluminescing. There are roaches that will uh, mimic fireflies. 
There are another group of beetles called soldier beetles or cantharids and lysids or netwing beetles that will also mimic fireflies. And you might be asking yourself, why are they, why are all these things mimicking fireflies? Well, um, many if not all fireflies are actually um, distasteful and poisonous uh, to predators. And so it's a good reason uh, to, to mimic them. So you will have a number of different um, uh, insects that, that take advantage of that. And, and not to be confused with things that reflect under UV light, which is a whole nother group of insects that aren't really bioluminescing like this, like the fireflies do, right? That's right. It, it turns out that, so that's fluorescence. And it turns out that there are lots of things that uh, fluoresce when exposed to wavelengths of UV light. Um, People are probably, you know, familiar with scorpions that are well known for doing that. Um, basically, the scorpions will fluoresce when exposed to UV light, except for their eyes, the tip of their stinger, and the first um, larval instar, the first instar babies, which ride on the top of mom, uh, don't uh, fluoresce. But it turns out that almost all insects um, fluoresce in some way or another, um, whether it's just the eyes. Uh, whether it's the whole thing, uh, millipedes and other arthropods will do this as well, horseshoe crabs, um, but lots of things which I had never really realized until I started yeah. walking around with a UV light shining on them, um, lots of things uh, will fluoresce uh, under yeah. light and some very striking uh, patterns. Well, one thing that we, uh, that we have here in Alabama that is super cool that does bioluminesce is are these, uh, they call them dismalites here in Alabama. Um, but they're actually just uh, midge, right? Like this. That's right. It's a larva of a non-biting midge. Uh, the family, sometimes put in the family Caroplatidae. And some of these uh, bioluminesce. Uh, and I guess we should say a midge is just a little, they kind of look like tiny little mosquitoes, but they don't bite at all as adults. Um, they're just tiny little flies. That's right. The flies are, um, adults are harmless. They're, the larvae are usually found in moist situations, sometimes actually, usually actually most of the time in water, but other times just yeah. in moist situations. And um, there are examples of these that will, uh, that live in caves and, and make these uh, very uh, sticky strings uh, that basically when they're bioluminescing they attract prey like moths and other things that will get caught up in that and then the larvae will actually feed on them. And here in um, Alabama we actually have um, these things I call them dismalites that um, live in kind of mossy uh, canyon edges, ravine edges, uh, and they bioluminesce kind of blue little dots. And if um, you've if you've never been to Dismal Canyon, that's a really cool place in northwestern Alabama that has these, and you can go visit them and take a night hike with them and, and see these for yourself. That's right. The only other, and this mm. isn't a very special group. The only other place so we have these sort of in the so Alabama, Tennessee, sort of that Georgia area. But the only other place in the world that they have them is in New Zealand, right? The ones that bioluminesce. Yeah, so you it's can, kind of a yeah. unique, really cool thing that we have here. That's right. So dismal lights are amazingly cool, and you should definitely see them. Uh, it should be on your bucket list. But we have a ton of fireflies here in Alabama, too. But if you're trying to figure out what species you have, um, you want to take note of when you're seeing them, um, where kind of in terms of height wise, the flash pattern and the color of it. And those things will help you uh, figure out what, uh, what species you might have. Along with this fancy little book, The Fireflies, Glowworms, and Lightning Bugs, this also will help you identify any species that, that you have in your backyard. This is great for east of the Rocky Mountains uh, and uh, is, yeah, just a fantastic uh, book uh, written by Lynn Faust uh, and uh, chock full, it's not just identification, but chock full of lots of great life history information about, again, not just fireflies, but other things that glow, uh, the glow <laughs> as, as well. Yeah. So we've talked about all sorts of uh, firefly species, their natural history, 
um, really other species that could be mistaken as them, including some things that do bioluminesce that um, you want to be aware of and not confuse them with fireflies or their larvae or pupa. Uh, and, um, and also other things that will um, fluoresce under UV light. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have any questions about any of that or comments, um, you can leave them in the comments below. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.